Hey everybody and welcome to our Facebook Live. This is a question and answer series, I guess, or a session. My name is John Deere and where is that coming from? Okay, technical glitches and that seems to be a norm for us here. Uh, <laughs> And I see there's all kinds of people. We have people from Canada. Yay, Canada. I am Canadian. Uh, we have people from Australia visiting us. Ohio, Michigan, Arkansas, from uh, Florida. We have people from Hawaii all over the place. So I want to welcome you guys. I want to welcome all of our replay players. This will be on YouTube um, later, I guess, on once James gets it posted. And just so you know, I do have James Deere here in the sidelines. James, you want to say hi? Hey, everybody. Yeah, there's James. And also Jennifer Deere is here. This is a family affair. And Jennifer, can you say hi? Hello. Okay, she's definitely not coming on camera. One day I will get her to come on camera. I, I promise that uh, one day it will happen. So anyways, uh, I would like to ask that you guys uh, share this video, share our YouTube page. Not sure if you guys know, but we did hit our 10,000 people on YouTube and we were super excited about that. Give us a little applause uh, down below if you don't mind because that was a, a big deal for us. We, uh, we really got serious about our YouTube channel probably in April and we kind of uh, breathed life into it. Uh, James got involved and uh, we have lots of footage. James has been here uh, in Costa Rica at our studio for the last uh, five weeks and we've been shooting lots and lots of videos and getting ready for the rest of the year. Um, anyways, if you guys want, you can start to you know, have some questions come through. Jennifer and James are keeping their eyes open. And until, that, uh, until we get some questions coming in, I will fill you in on a few things that are happening. And normally I save this till the end of a session, but we do have some events coming up. And uh, with our events that are coming up, the first one is we are going to be in uh, Australia and New Zealand. It's been a few years since we've been back to Australia and we are going to be in uh, Brisbane, in Melbourne, Sydney, and Auckland for the first time. So we have two-day hands-on digitizing training that's going on there. And uh, there is another technical difficulty. I'm listening to myself speak. But we're looking forward to getting, uh, getting back there again. And it'll be a great session. It's not just going to be about uh, digitizing. We will be talking, I guess, about... Uh, you know, doing fonts and doing some fun stuff, all the, the toys in the hoop projects, key fobs, mug rugs. I know all of that has been hugely popular and everything that you do learn uh, does transfer to any brand of software. Obviously to keep things flowing, we do uh, have one brand that we use at the shows. Uh, we're gonna be actually in Harrisburg, uh, Virginia at Patchworks Plus in October and that's the 18th to 20th. That's two day hands on. Uh, just to let you guys know, we have, I think, three more, one of them isn't listed, but three more hands-on events with dealers that we're doing this year. And next year, we actually aren't going to be doing uh, any dealer events. We're going back to doing consumer shows, and we'll be announcing all of our events a little later on. But uh, we have big things planned uh, for next year, and we're going to be at a lot of consumer shows. And with regards, because I know people have been asking about more of our digitizing workshops, we will be announcing in probably October uh, our events and our dates for our workshops for hands-on digitizing. So that's all coming up. We also have uh, Sandy's Fabrics in uh, Kennewick, uh, Washington, and that is just hands-on embroidery. There's no digitizing class there. It's just going to be hands-on embroidery. So we're really looking forward to doing that as well. Uh, did we have any questions come in yet, Jennifer? Yes, Janice has a question and she's asking, she'd like to know how to do the sketch fill on designs. Okay, so Janice, uh, where was Janice from? Uh, she doesn't say. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, James is telling me I got to go to a new slide here. Hold on one second. James, you can speak out here. James uh, really wants to be in charge of switching all of my screen captures and slides, but I refuse to give up control. Which one was it here, James? 
Okay, there we go. Question and answer. Here we go. <laughs> and he's saying, I, I knew I should have done this, Dad. But anyways, um, back to the question. The question was doing uh, sketch work within designs. Now, um, sketch fill. On a oh, sketch design. fill in yeah. a design. Um, well, let's put it this way. Within the digitizing software, and I will use Hatch as an example, um, there is what I like to call contour fills and there is what I like to call variegated fills. Now a contour fill, which I use a lot in my digitizing now, actually in the background, if you see some of our, our new embroidery art that we've done, you'll notice that there's a lot of blended fill patterns and things that do look like sketch work. And uh, with designs like that, I like to use a lot of contour fills, which means that the fill doesn't just go in one straight line. I actually use the software to create a contour within the, the actual fill itself. Now, besides just the contours, I like to uh, really adjust the density, the spacing between the stitches, because uh, if you've watched some of my other videos, and if you've looked at some of uh, the designs that we digitize, and I'm talking about the artistic merit designs, we do put down what I like to call a base fill stitch. It is a fill stitch that kind of holds a foundation for the design. And then the way I've kind of evolved my techniques is I will uh, use a contour or a blending effect on top of that base fill, but I'm always using lower densities because we don't like to have bulletproof embroidery. So I will use the contour fills, but I also do use the variegated feature within the software as well. Uh, Hatch does have a contour feature where you can uh, adjust the, I guess, directions of the fills, and they can be abrupt. They can actually go right up to a V, or you can have it as a curve. But you can also adjust that your fills will have lower density at one end and higher density at the other. So it does give you really a blended effect. Now, I've found that when you're dealing with object-based embroidery, and that really is what I do digitize now. I used to do a lot of uh, what I would call really sketch work, and those are more blended techniques. Uh, James, actually, can you do me a favor? James, dear. I want uh, James to go behind camera number two, and if you will move the camera right up there to this, uh, any of these two designs up here that's out of the, the screenshot. Uh, those are actually what I would call traditional sketch work. There's actually a skull and a pineapple. And if you look at those, those are sort of little you know, embroidery art things that I did and I was kind of playing around with paint and I was digitizing. I was using the pen tool to create all of that blending effect. And it looks really good and it looks hand done, but the issue is it can't be resized as much. When we're looking more at things like this down here now, and we have uh, this actually, I think it was just released, but this is like the uh, cocktail pack, and it's a uh, mojito. But if you look at the blending of the fills in here, these are more contour fills. These are fills that are changing directions. And uh, the one beside it, which is this one right here, James, uh, this is a design that has not been released, and I'm doing more embroidery. Right. This is a really big piece of artwork. There's my head coming in there, but it's a big design that's in there, and it is also using really uh, low blended fills. Now, the beauty of doing that, and I'm going to go back to my other camera now, if I can find it. James is saying I should be controlling this. There, I did figure it out. Uh, the beauty of doing things as object-based and utilizing the contour fills within a design is I am able to resize things because it's object-based embroidery. And just so you know, like the, the harbor scene that's over here, and this is actually the window scene that is gonna be released in a, in a couple weeks, these designs I digitized so that they would fit within a 200 by 300 frame all the way up to a 350 by 500 millimeter frame on the Redline machine. And I didn't have to redigitize the designs because I knew that I wanted to resize them. So I tried to avoid as much manual inputs as possible and stick to creating objects within the design. 
I, I am an old school puncher. I've been called a bit of a dinosaur by some in the industry, but I, I am an, an evolved dinosaur. I'm not extinct. I have evolved with the software and I love utilizing the tools that allow us to do these incredible things because the thought of increasing a design, uh, you know, 100% in the old days wasn't really feasible. Okay, uh, now hopefully that answers that question as far as doing sketch work. There's a difference between manual sketch work and sort of automated sketch work within objects. Um, is there any other questions? Not at this time. Not at this time? Okay, so if you have any uh, questions, please feel free to bring them in. I will actually uh, mention a couple things, and I'm going to do a, a giveaway somewhere throughout the stream. So uh, you can start right now if you want to type in the word free within the comments below. Uh, we will at some point go back, see where somebody said the word free, and we'll be giving away a little mystery prize. Uh, the last uh, Facebook Live that we did, I kind of revealed something that was relatively new. Uh, those of you who have watched our uh, Facebook Lives or are you know, part of our Hatch Facts group know that I have been a little font crazy over the last year and a half. Uh, come September, we will have hit 700 fonts and elements and flexi fills, flexi shapes. And I sort of showed uh, the last week that there is things that we've done with fonts that have never been done before. Uh, one sample that I have right here, and this was shown in our last one, so I'm not trying to totally repeat the, the past, but this is a flexi shape where on screen I literally made this into an embroidery design with 3D foam. And then this was the big reveal, and this one is what people really got excited about. And this is going to be a, a big focus for us in the future. This actually was our quilters collections. And within the software, it basically gives people the ability to do true red work, two passes a thread of quilting designs. We've come out, I think, with quilters one and two so far. There is a three, there is a four, and there is a five. Uh, those are all coming, so there is more. Uh, but one thing that we did do as an improvement, just so you know, if you have been on our Wilcom Embroidery Font site, where we have all of our fonts listed, uh, we do listen to our customers' requests because a lot of people, when they're using these elements or shapes or objects, they they are you know lettering their fonts, but they are uh, objects that have been assigned a keystroke. And the only way to really find these objects is if you go into the insert character. And the problem is people would, uh, I guess, have trouble finding certain characters. So on our site now, and this is where we're kind of moving forward and trying to move backwards as, as I guess, quickly as possible, we are adding PDFs to every one of our fonts. Every, you know, one of the almost 700 fonts on our, on our Wilcom uh, embroidery font site, there is now a button where you can download a PDF. And it's not on all of them at this point, but we're trying to work with the most difficult ones like the Quilters Collection. This has not been seen before because it hasn't been released, but this is our Quilter Collection 3. And this is the new PDF that you can download right from the site. It, it isn't put into your, uh, into your uh, I guess, what would it be called, guys? The, uh, when you download, Quilter? yeah, what's that? The folder? Yeah, into your folder, like into your logged in section. So it won't necessarily be in there, but it is right on the page on our site. And the reason why we made it available to everybody is sometimes when you want a font, you might, before you even purchase it, just want to print it out and see what it looks like. Or if you're running embroidery as a business, and we are open to business questions here in this uh, question and answer, you can uh, actually print this off and show it to your, your potential customer. Now the beautiful part of this is we actually have assigned a keystroke number and name, so to speak, to every one of these. So now if you want to know that let's say this one right here is actually keyboard U. So you can actually see that the letter U is assigned to that image and it is a, a much quicker way for you to print this off 
and see exactly which keystroke is assigned to which object because we have uh, literally you know now almost a hundred different elements that you can actually or will be able to choose from they have not all been released as of yet so that's one improvement that we uh, that we did make uh, now anything uh, question? And, yes question okay. yes so Steve from Vegas, he's asking your opinion on the Hatch Composer versus the Auto Digitizer. Okay. He's a rookie and he wants an easier starting point for digitizing. Okay. Uh, this is a question, uh, Steve from Vegas, and uh, love Vegas, many, many shows there over the years. Uh, we actually have uh, different modules within Hatch, and I, I'm explaining this because some of you obviously own other software programs. Hatch is modular, so it starts as a organizer, goes to lettering and layout, then goes to what's called composer, which is editing and auto-digitizing, and then there's the full-blown digitizing program. Um, and if you do uh, want to integrate a graphics program with Hatch, you can, from the composer level on, uh, integrate Corel Draw directly into the software. It has to be a specified version of Corel Draw that will integrate. And what it does is it gives you a separation between graphics mode and embroidery mode, and the two work together. Now, I will be honest with you, I know just enough about Corel Draw and Illustrator to be dangerous. I, I have been in graphic arts my entire career. I know a, a bit about Illustrator and Corel Draw, and I can kind of feel my way around. Uh, but when it comes to digitizing, I've always had a bit of a separation between the two, and I'll, I'll give you a little example as to why. Um, many years ago, I worked with a company, and I actually did a video tutorial for them. It was called Masterworks, and Masterworks is a program that is no longer available, but this is almost 15 years ago, and it was ahead of its time. It was made by one of the two world leaders. And it actually did work or integrate with uh, Illustrator files, AI files. And the uh, people who developed that software wanted to make sure that in my training, I designated a part of the training showing people how you could bring in a true vector file format like Corel Draw or Illustrator and have the software automate it and take over. Now the issue was, and this is still true to this day, a graphic artist creates a uh, graphic you know, arts file like Corel Draw or Illustrator in layers and generally it's either for one of two purposes. Either it's for print or it is um, for, uh, you know, sweatshirts or t-shirts or it could be for silk screening but the way it always works is you build colors on layers layer upon layer and that's generally how you build your graphics when you're working within an art program is you're layering colors and blending colors on top of each other now the thing is a inkjet printer doesn't have to deal with the issues of density or becoming uh, bulletproof or stitch intensive and what happened way back when was I would take these Illustrator files, bring them into the software, press that magical bu button or the wizard, and voila, stitches would appear. But what the problem was is the stitches appeared for every single layer that was built up on each other. And when you went to run it on the machine, it was just a stitch intensive bulletproof mess. I mean, you literally law enforcement could use it instead of you know wearing a vest that's how stitch intensive it was so uh, I did end up making it work but I had a graphic artist who actually worked in our office at the time who knew Illustrator worked with Illustrator and I had them spend an incredible amount of time redrawing or editing that you know vector image so that it would be friendly for embroidery so the moral of the story is it's not impossible to take a Corel Draw file, bring it into Hatch or a Wilcom platform, and press the button and have it convert to stitches. That will happen. But to make it happen so that it actually is friendly on a machine, you will have to go into Corel and make adjustments based on the layering of the object so that the design doesn't become too stitch intensive. Now at that point, uh, you really do, uh, I guess, 
let's put it this way. I, people have always said to me, which program do I use to modify my files before I digitize? In other words, I get, I get artwork on everything. And I mean, huge, uh, sorry, used napkins or matchbook covers or faded artwork. I mean, I've How gotten... those underwear? Oh, <laughs> one time Jennifer just, you know, came in from the sidelines. I actually had somebody back in the commercial days bring me in underwear because they liked the logo on the underwear. And these were not new in the package underwear. They were, you know, anyways, let's not go down that road. But I, I've had almost anything you can imagine with regards to artwork. And people would ask me, what software program do you bring it into to clean up the artwork before you digitize? My answer has always been, for me personally, none. Because Wilcom is object-based. It's, it's vector art for embroidery. That's really what it is. You're taking, you're creating objects. It has all the same tools. You're drawing objects, but you're assigning stitch types. Now, for those of you who are watching, who haven't had a chance to play with Wilcom, and if you've never heard of them before, they, they are the world leader for literally 30 years. Three decades, Wilcom has been number one. I have used them for many, many years. Yes, I use other programs as well, but I was always, always honest coming into the commercial and home industry. When people asked me what software I used, it was Wilcom. Uh, when Hatch came out, I was excited because it is basically... Uh, home embroidery software on steroids. It does stuff that pretty much my, you know, high income software does. But there is actually a 30 day trial. So you can actually download a trial for 30 days, play with it. The best part is, and this is where to be honest, I, I've said over and over again, any software programs only as good as the education. We do provide software uh, tutorials and on our YouTube channel, we do have uh, lots of videos that help people get past that learning curve. So anyways, back to the vector art thing. Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't rely too much on a any embroidery program bringing in a vector file and automatically converting it. You will have to edit the design. Okay, Patty has a question. She says she has a single needle machine she's had for two and a half years, and she's interested in the Redline multi-needle and your thoughts on the machine and the use of it. Okay, ease of use. Uh, the ease of use. Uh, question was, uh, Patty, I don't know if you've got to hear Jennifer or not, but uh, Patty has a single needle machine, had it for two and a half years and is considering a multi-needle machine and specifically asked about the red line and I'm hoping it's because we are now official sponsors of red line. Uh, the red line is a 15 needle, actually, you know what? James, you're going to be amazed at the technology here because actually Dad has to put on his glasses first. These buttons are really small. Aha, ta-da, red line, okay? So we have the red line machine that just came up there. It is a 15-needle machine, and it is a commercial-grade machine, a commercial-grade stepper motors. I got to be totally honest, does not have the same bells and whistles as some of the, some of the crossover machines have. I'm talking about, you know, cameras and, and so men and all that, which I love. I mean, I, I have those machines as well. But as far as a commercial machine that does embroidery, uh, I am very impressed with the red line. Uh, I don't get involved or, or attach my sails to any ship uh, very quickly unless I feel confident about a machine. And, and this is a machine that is actually at an extremely low price point comparatively to others on the market, which some people say, why is it so inexpensive? And the reason why I've said this in other uh, videos is because they really don't have a lot of overhead assigned to the machine. There's not a huge distribution channel. But the thing that impresses me the most is the gentleman uh, who owns the company, his name is Orlando, he actually is a tech. That's his background. And he has made sure that this machine, which does come from offshore, has passed his requirements as far as the stepper motors, the belts, uh, the software that's going into it. He really, in my opinion, over the years, I've seen that he has uh, taken this machine uh, with, he's taken ownership of it. He actually, his, his name is behind it. And for that reason and seeing that, after three or four years of working with them at trade shows, we did agree to become an ambassador. And I did have one delivered here. Uh, what would it be, James? Three months ago, maybe? 
three months ago, and we have been putting it to the test. I have been stitching designs, as you can see around me. I've been stitching designs in the big oversized sash frame that comes on the machine, and the largest one so far is uh, over a quarter million stitches. That's, you know, 250,000 stitches. And for the most part, the only thing that I've had to do was change bobbins. Keep in mind, please, that the designs are well digitized. <laughs> uh, that, that is the truth with any machine. I, uh, and hopefully, again, for some of you who are watching, give me a thumbs up or, or say yes if you agree with me on this. A lot of people buy a machine, and I don't care what brand it is, but they get frustrated with the machine and, and they think that the machine is not a quality machine because they're basically feeding it garbage. They're feeding it stitch intensive designs that break threads that are bulletproof. And any machine that is loaded with a design that is too stitch intensive and not digitized well will not run well. And that's where I, I felt really bad for dealers over the years because they do sell, for the most part, every dealer, every major machine brand sells uh, quality equipment, but people are putting poorly digitized designs into it and then blaming the machine or not knowing enough about you know the basics like hooping and stabilizers and needles and tension even. I mean, if you don't know how to adjust tensions on a machine, that's a, a big problem. It's kind of been fun. As I mentioned, James has been with me here in uh, Costa Rica for the last five weeks and we've been shooting a lot of videos. But one of the big things I've been doing with James is I've been training him on the red line. And he's learned how to load the machine, how to auto trace, how to load the colors, how to make sure that you know you do everything in sequence properly. And I learned how to do all that watching the YouTube videos on Redline site. So I did not have to go for the the you know training. Keep in mind, please, I have I have many years of experience under my belt. I am still going to go to El Paso, Texas, and I'm going to go for the training because I do want to visit Orlando and, and see exactly what a customer goes through because that training is also free. You have to pay to, to go there and for your accommodations, but that training, in my opinion, is worth its weight in gold. If you have somebody that's willing to you know spend a couple days with you and teach you about embroidery, Take advantage of it, especially if it has that word free. Now, also, just so you know, if you do, as it mentions in the corner of the screen, if you are interested in a red line, go to their website. I do not sell them on my site. We are an ambassador. The one little perk is if you do uh, find yourself interested in one of the machines in the future, just mention the code DEAR19 and we will actually give you a bonus hooping station, one of our large echidna hooping stations. Uh, which uh, is a you know it's a, it's a great thing. The, the, actually, one of the things I love about the red lines, and it's the, really the first time I've been able to play uh, with these, is I love the mighty hoops, the magnetic hoops. I got to be honest, now that I have really played with them, I uh, don't like hooping almost any other way. They're just that good. And one of the great things about the Mighty Hoops, the magnetic hooping uh, systems, with the Echidna Hooping Station is the Echidna Hooping Station has a metal plate. You know, if you look over, oops, over here on the side where the hooping station is, there's a metal plate behind there. So the plate of the hoop on the, the Mighty Hoop actually just sits right on there and doesn't move. Uh, Jennifer's holding up a prop here, okay? Hold on. I'm going to show you guys just what this looks like real quick. And maybe, yeah, it's a, actually this is the older model, but I'm going to go over to camera too. Here we go. This is the Echidna Hooping Station. This is my older model. There is a new, improved, lighter model that uh, we have available. I and don't like the sounds of that. What's that? A newer, lighter, improved model. model. <laughs> My wife did. Okay, as far as shipping is concerned, a newer, lighter, improved model. I have no idea what my wife, Jennifer, was referring to there, but I am going to. I, I've been um, married for many years, and I'm just going to keep my mouth completely quiet on that one. Um, any other questions, guys? So, as far as Redline is concerned, I am about five weeks in. I've literally run, I'm guessing, eight or nine million stitches on that machine, if not more. And we oil it, we maintain it, every, we're following uh, Orlando's instructions and it's running fantastically. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, back to Q&A. 
There we go. I pressed the wrong button. James really wants control of this little keypad that I have here. Bruce so. says that he watches a lot of your videos and he loves them. Yours Thank you. Her, which is sweet. And he's saying, is there an easy to what? Uh, is there an easy way to have even half the information sink into his mind? <laughs> Sorry, what was that, James? Okay, uh, Bruce is having, uh, I guess, uh, to get the information to sink into his mind. Uh, the beauty of our YouTube channel is, uh, oh, actually, yeah, okay, James is now going over here. Actually, we are trying to get more and more into technology, so I am going to see if this works. Let's cross our fingers, guys, and let's do this, and James, tell me if this does work, and let's go to right here, and there we go. And we'll see uh, if this comes on live now. Uh, if you do go to our Digitizing Made Easy site, uh, we are all about education. And we do actually have our uh, Embroidery Cheat Sheet Digitizing 101 course that's there. We do have interactive streaming lessons that start out uh, at level one, then two, then three. And it, to be honest, it starts at a running stitch, a satin stitch, and then a fill stitch. It is a lot of foundational theory, and we do do it in 11 different programs. Uh, as far as having things sink in, I have to be honest, it's all about, um, how can I put this? Actually, I'm trying to get back here, James. Can you help me get back? Ha. <laughs> There we go. Okay, I think I'm back. Uh, as far as it's sinking in, I got to be honest with you, digitizing and embroidery is all about rep repetition, repetition, repetition. It's about learning the tools in your, your program and the foundational tools and then doing the same thing over and over and over again. If anybody has had a chance to take our Digitizer's Dream Workshop and you've had two days of hands-on digitizing, uh, you know, mention it in the comments, please. But um, I know that those are kind of tough days because I teach a lot of theory. I cover a lot in two days. And to be honest, people click their left and right click buttons more than they ever imagined they would in a two day period. But what I try to tell people is once you have that foundation, it's like riding a bike. Once you know how to, to create a running stitch properly or a satin stitch properly or a fill stitch, and it doesn't matter which program you're using because they're all kind of the same. But once you have that foundation, that's what you build on. Uh, you will not be creating, you know, designs like this after my, you know, three level course on digitizing. I, I'll be totally honest with you. You'll have a foundation to build on so that if you spend time and practice and sew things out, that will actually come with time. Okay. James is saying, go to the question and answer. Uh, you, do you want control of this, James? There's a really long cord on here. Ina that, is asking that, the fonts that she's already purchased, do they have access to the PDFs? Uh, the fonts that are purchased, the, here's, uh, and this has been a big blessing. We have uh, had the Wilcom embroidery font site going for a while now, and it is relatively no, but new, but we had another site before that sold the fonts. And we actually are doing quite well with the font sales. And to go back and place the PDFs inside of everybody's carts, uh, you know, where all of their orders were, we did assess that. And to be honest, it, it's almost impossible at this point. There's been uh, too many past, I guess, downloads to do that, which is why we opted on the page of the site. Uh, let's say we're talking about this one on Quilter's Collection 1 and 2 now. Uh, I think Quilter Collections 2 has been released. Uh, if, if not, it's being released very soon. But if you do go onto that page on the Wilcom Embroidery Font site, you will see a button there now that says Downloadable PDF. And if you know you own that font, you can click that button and you can download this PDF. So uh, yes, they are accessible to you. Uh, to be honest, we haven't gotten our PDFs done for every single font we've released yet. We've started for the, uh, with the elements and the monograms. Anything that requires unique keystrokes, 
because a regular alphabet is upper and lower case and an exclamation part mark is an exclamation mark. So those we uh, haven't done yet, but they will be done in the future. Okay, Bet is asking, what type of tablet would you recommend for digitizing? Okay, uh, what type of tablet would I recommend for digitizing? Uh, I do have on YouTube uh, a little demo showing the tablet and I just actually happened to have the box sitting right beside me here. So this was not planned, but uh, this is the box of the tablet that I actually have on the road. And you can see there is a name at the bottom there called Yanova. So Yanova is the, the brand. Now it comes in a box like this. This is the one that I actually take to the digitizers workshops when I am in Australia next uh, month. We're going to be doing our hands-on digitizing. I'm bringing my um, solid state computer with me, which is a tiny little computer, and I'm bringing my tablet with me because I personally would not want to teach a two-day digitizing class on a laptop. It's just screens way too small. Now that Yanova model is actually a 21-inch monitor. Uh, right now I'm talking to you on a Microsoft Studio, which is a 27 inch monitor, which does have a pen. And I do actually digitize on it. I was not really happy with it until recently. Uh, I actually thought originally that it wasn't keeping up with me, even though it was a very expensive uh, monitor or computer, because it's an all-in-one until I found this, and I'm not talking about my pinky, I'm talking about my, uh, you know, Michael Jackson glove here. Uh, the, the reason why is, be careful when you're looking for a monitor, whether it's on Amazon or whether you're looking for a new monitor, because most monitors these, day, these days have the dual ability to have touch screen, which means that if your flesh touches the screen, it'll put inputs in. If your pen touches the screen, it'll put inputs in. If they both touch at the same time, guess what? They'll be conflicting with each other and you'll be putting points down. So when I'm digitizing now on my actual screen, I do digitize with this cool glove on. And this came with my Yanova. It actually has the Yanova thing on here. Now, keep in mind though, this monitor that I did show you originally, that is on Amazon. They sell them on Amazon. That is a 21 inch monitor and it is the cheapest of the 21 inch monitor brands that they offer. The reason why is it does not have touch capability. It only has pen. So if you're going to look for one of those and I don't know the current price point, but it's reasonably priced compared to the old days. Yes. So another, any other questions? Um, I guess maybe you can just briefly uh, mentioned to Janet. She's saying, if you go to a workshop, how do you practice if you have a large machine? If you go to a workshop, how do you practice? Okay. Uh, it's fun and software. Okay. Yes. Uh, well, that's uh, we have two different types of workshops. Uh, the digitizing workshops that we do, they are hands-on digitizing. And what we do is we have people come with their laptops or I've had people show up with you know, monitors even, the pen tablet monitors. Uh, I tell people to make sure you have an external mouse. Oops, something just happened. Okay, I tried to pick up my mouse and it didn't work. So actually, here we go. You, you wanna make sure you have an external mouse with you uh, because one of the most frustrating things you can ever do is digitize on that little pad on your laptop. You will, you will just want to throw it against the wall. So uh, if you're doing a hands-on digitizing class, we actually send you the software two weeks prior to the class because you have to be all using the same brand. If I have 50 or 60, or we've even had, I think, in uh, we've had up to 100 people, close to 100 people at a hands-on digitizing class. I've had helpers, but there's no way I could teach a class that size if everybody wasn't on the same program. So you do bring that. We do not sew samples at, uh, there at the machine. Keep in mind though, Gary in Australia, and thumbs up if you guys know Gary, you know, Gary at Echidna, one of my favorite people in the world. We've been friends and working together for many years. In Australia, Gary is going to have at the workshops machines there, surprise, surprise. And we are gonna be sewing some samples during the event. And Gary is also opening up after the event's over, 
for anybody, you don't have to be signed up for the workshop, to come and visit and see all the new features of the Brother Machines that are available because they are pretty spectacular. So you can actually come and see the machines. And we do have a special prize for you. I'm going to give away, remember I said that word free? Who likes free? Okay, We're going to have a free gift for everybody who comes. So type in the word free because we still have a little giveaway afterwards. Um, Audrey was saying, what was the glove called and where was it purchased from? Uh, the glove itself actually came with my monitor. It's actually a Yanova. Okay, it's called Yanova is the monitor brand. But they included two of these gloves with the monitor, even though it wasn't a touchscreen. If you type in uh, Yanova monitor or Yanova glove on Amazon, I, I have seen these gloves with the little finger thing for sale on Amazon, and they're like you know twenty bucks, and you get a set of fourteen ninety five. Uh, Yanova is spelt Y I Y N O V A, so it's Y I Y N O V A. A lot of people have asked me why I endorse this brand, and the reason why is. Um, I did my homework on the specs, and by specs I mean the refresh rate of the monitors, because if you go onto Amazon and you type in PC pen tablet, you will get a huge amount of lists, like all different brands are gonna be there. And this Unova brand is one actually that does not pop up first. Other ones do pop up before it, but when I was searching I found that that one had the best specs for graphics that I found, and I, it is incredibly reliable. I, I actually have nothing but good things to say about it. Elizabeth was asking if there's any particular type of pen for digitizing. Uh, is there any particular type of pen? Um, and I'm looking around my desk to see if I have one of my old pens here. Can you see it handy, Jennifer, anywhere? Okay. Uh, I did use for many years a pen that came with a Wacom monitor. That's W-A-C-O-M, uh, Wacom. Uh, which I do not, here it is, Jennifer found it, because she always finds things. He, uh, talking about husbands and wives and finding things, I can look for 10 minutes in the fridge for something that, you know, as Jennifer says is there, it's not there, and then she magically finds Ladies, it. Ladies, give me a heart to know what I'm going through. <laughs> and it's not 10 minutes, it's... <laughs> okay, so anyways, uh, she found this for me. This is actually the pen that comes with the Wacom monitors. And i got to be honest, I love the Wacom monitors, the Cintiq monitors. But they are priced really, really high. And this is actually an incredible pen that is just, it, it fits like a glove, no pun intended. This is the one that comes with my very, very expensive uh, you know, studio. And I do like this one much better. I, this one works for me. I will be honest with you, the Yanova, and I do not have a pen here, unless I do over there in the corner. Um, I think it's actually upstairs in our, in our other office, but the Yanova pen is actually very close in shape to this one. So I actually prefer the pen that comes on my $450 Yanova as opposed to my very expensive Studio Microsoft. It's actually kind of a friendlier pen to use. Uh, any other questions? Um. Oh, I was going to mention, if uh, Jennifer's looking, the other types of events that we do, and these are specifically at dealer stores, and there are three coming up, and then we're not doing any next year, they are hands-on embroidery events. So we are not digitizing for the two days. This is two days of hands-on projects where we actually do things like freestanding lace, mug rugs in the hoop, uh, cut work. We've done uh, like a hatch smash trapunto working with terry cloth and just all kinds of cool stuff, mylar and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, Pat said she missed it. She just popped in. Could you just show the brand again while you answer this question? Yep. Maybe okay. an up close so they can actually see sure. the image. Sure. This so is... And look in the comments. James is going to type in the link, okay, to the thing. But it is a Yanova, Y I Y N O V A, Yanova. the The best endorsement, I'll be honest with you, and I'll tell this really, really quickly. I took my Yanova to my first event that I ever did. I I think it was uh, in uh, Dallas, and I set it up and I put it in my suitcase and went from Liberia, Costa Rica, to Dallas. And I got to be honest, United was not very gentle with my suitcase. 
I took the monitor out of my suitcase and it was making a rattling sound. I plugged it in and the screen was black. And I did have to teach the entire class because the pen still worked, but there was no screen. I did the entire class looking behind my shoulder at the screen because the, the projector was still working. And I ended up sending that Unova monitor into the distributor, which was in Buffalo, New York. And within three or four days, they sent me out a you know, a repaired or brand new model. And I was just amazed at the customer support from that brand. Uh, Jeff is asking, do you have a video covering the setup for the Wacom Cintiq 24? Uh, for the Wacom Cintiq, no, I do not have a video. Uh, I, I might be, um, let's put it this way. I, I've said this at events many times. I come from a, a manufacturer's background. My grandparents started in the Shifley industry uh, doing yard good and, and lace and doing emblems. And the emblems is a, a penny business. And my grandfather always used to say, you know, count your pennies because they turn into dollars. So it has made me a little bit frugal when it comes to my spending, uh, unless it's things like important things like sunglasses or uh, shoes. Those are, you know, fall out of the exception. I'm surprised my wife didn't laugh at that one because I am the spender in the family. But uh, with regards um, to the monitors, I found that the Wacoms, as they, they are the best in the industry, I could spend two and a half thousand dollars on a Wacom, or I could spend, you know, four hundred and fifty dollars on a Yanova, and I basically weighed it and said I'm going to go for the cheaper version. So I do not have the Wacom anymore. I sort of uh, replaced it with the studio. Is it easy to set up? Yeah, they, they uh, generally, to set any of these up, they are generally uh, install the drivers. And uh, here I will mention, though, I'm always hesitant of installing a monitor, a PC pen tablet based monitor, into or alongside a laptop that already has PC pen tablet technology because you could have drivers that conflict against each other. That I would be careful with. So that may sort of tie in with Mary Ann's question. She says she's in the process of purchasing a new laptop for Hatch for digitizing. Yes. Would you recommend a larger gaming computer or a smaller laptop with a tablet? Uh, I personally would, uh, if you're going to have a standalone you know, computer, so to speak, just for Hatch and digitizing, you're going to keep it in your sewing room. You don't have to carry it with you on an airplane and do stuff at three in the morning. I'm speaking from experience. I would definitely have a standalone PC that is uh, set up. The, the one that I use on the road is actually called a solid state PC. It's, it's a little box like this big, but and it cost me, I think, $800 for just the PC. But it is durable and is incredible and is powerful for 800 bucks. Uh, then I added the monitor on top of it. And for the same price that I would have paid for a quality laptop, because I do have a, uh, a Lenovo Yoga uh, laptop that has the pen, uh, that cost me a couple thousand dollars. This setup here that I use on the road, which is much friendlier for digitizing, is saving me probably about five or six hundred dollars and is going to be a much better value and ease of use. Digitizing on a small screen is tough, especially if you follow my six to one rule. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch some of my videos. You know, I, I digitized and learned, you know, 30 something years ago manually punching at a six to one scale, and I still do that to this day. If you go six to one on a little monitor, you won't see much. You need a bigger monitor to make it clean. Good? Okay, so here's where I'm going to show you guys something a little bit different. And uh, if you get any questions, pop them in, but I'm going to show you something completely new. Okay, uh, I, I only have 10 minutes left, and my son James just mentioned that. And the reason why is James has to go... Okay, I forgot. He's got a date. No, he doesn't. Is it? <laughs> so, anyways, uh, I, I'm not allowed to mention what I was going to say. I'm getting better. Aren't I getting better, guys? Okay, James gave me a thumbs up. Anyways, uh, I'm going to go to the Hatch software very quickly. And hopefully you guys can see the Hatch program that just came up. And I'm going to show you something on screen pretty quickly as well. This is the Hatch software, and I'm in the lettering mode of the software. 
and I'm actually at the Quilters collection. This is the one that I showed at the last Facebook Live. And if you didn't get a chance to see it, it's kind of cool because when you go to insert the characters, you can actually bring up an object. It doesn't matter which one. It comes up on screen. I can resize that object. And then once I resize it to whatever size I want, I can, and let's change the color so you can see it a little bit clearer. I can basically, while it's highlighted, go to create layouts and I can tell it to do let's say a uh, you know a copy reflection and do something like this and boom I've created a quilt square and then I can also very quickly come in here and highlight everything for those of you who have played with the elements and the quilt elements and you've put multiple elements in lay out all your elements first and then go back to your lettering and it's at this point that you break it apart. If you look in my sequence right now, you can see all four of the objects that I chose, but when I hit the break apart, look what happens in the sequence. It's broken apart into individuals. Now it's at this point where I select everything, I can go back to my create layouts and I can come in here and I can do any type of stippling or quilting or whatever I want and it's going to automatically stipple and quilt around an object. So that's what I showed you guys last week and it's pretty cool. Now here's what is new and this is where we are always trying to be uh, innovators and I, I do feel that when it comes to fonts and the technology we were the ones who assigned the you know, letter minimum size to the fonts. We came up with the uh, elements. We've done the flexi fills. If you don't know what any of this stuff is, you got to get onto our Wilcom site and take a look because we've done things with lettering that nobody's ever dreamed of. But I've also gotten it to another level. When we actually are going to be doing our consumer shows next year, we're going to be doing all of the original Sew and Quilt Expos. We're going to be at the Road to California. We are going to be at Puyallup in Washington State. And I have a brand new class that I'm going to be doing called Quilting Made Easy. And it's all based around all of the quilt packs that we're going to have available. Now this is the Quilters Collection 1, but it's actually an FF afterwards for flexi fill. Now here's the difference. I had the first one that I showed you and I believe it was actually, uh, which one did I call up? Does anybody remember? Okay, I'm looking for it. finding something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jennifer, I love you. Okay, uh, it is kind of important that I find this one and I need to put on my glasses. Okay, here, here it is right here. It was C. So I'm going to bring this in. Now this is the exact same object, but when I make it bigger, look what happened. It is no longer just running stitch outlines. It is actually a flexi fill, which means that it's a single direction fill. And now when I take this, I can take this object and I can duplicate that object. So I have two of them. And then I can hit this one and make it a different color. And then I can come in and I can take this one and I can break it apart and I can start to take all of these objects here and I'm going to start to go down the list and I'm going to delete these ones so that I just do that. And now I have the original objects and I'm going to take that one. I'm going to turn it into a cross stitch or let's go and make it a motif and I can choose, actually let's choose all those at the same time. So I'm not doing this three times in a row. I did not want to duplicate that. Let's go back, hit that one, hit the select, and I'm going to choose a motif, and we will choose the same motif for all of them. Let's do the stars motif. And now I'm gonna to go to the first object here, and I'm going to take that one, and I'm going to break it apart, and I'm going to take it, and I'm going to turn it into an outline, but I'm going to turn it into a satin stitch, and I'm going to make sure that it's a normal offset and that it's two millimeters. And then I can do the same thing to the other ones where I'll take those, I'll turn it into outlines, uh, satin stitch, two millimeter offset. So I'm going to take that and go in like this, two millimeters, make sure that it's on normal. 
And then I'm going to take all of the, I don't want this object here, so I'll just delete it. I'll take these two here, and I'm going to tell it to do a stem stitch with three passes going around it. And then I'm going to start to take these, and I'll start putting them in a different order. So I'm going to take that one and put it there. Then I'll take this one and put it here. And then I'll take this one and I'll put it right there. And if you look at that now, because it's broken apart, and because I can go now go to create layout and let's go to my copy reflection and I now have an incredible layout where I've gone way beyond just simple quilting we actually now have all of these quilting patterns that are available for doing some really really cool stuff so I'm gonna get out of here right now and I did run this sample earlier yesterday so I wanted you to see this. This is on a placemat, and here you can see that exact design done with the same motif, the same sort of you know stem stitch going around the outside. There was absolutely no thread breaks, very few trims. This is the beauty of what we're doing now, is we are giving you guys just hundreds and thousands of objects that you can play with that you know were digitized correctly but you have unlimited control so think about all of those quilting patterns that I've done and how they can be used as red work and now think about the possibilities of making contour fills and motif fills and putting borders or appliques or anything that you want around these objects is actually there for you to now do so that is the the next evolution I'm ho I hope I don't start running out of ideas because uh, we've kept a pretty steady flow uh, Kay was asking is quilters included with the hatch digitizer uh, the quilting um, just so you know um, actually I think I can go here too James I might need your help I'm gonna go right over here here and here let's see if this works okay uh, we do have a site called wilcomembroideryfonts.com and within our Wilcom Embroidery Fonts site and now I have to go here I believe and now I can go on. okay so here I actually have the quilter collection two and three three actually was released I guess it was released today because it's Thursday so if you come here to quilter collection three you can see that all of these objects are available and when you buy this ESA file all you do is you load it into the software now I will let you know that with regards to the software actually I'm gonna go back one and let's go to quilters collection 2 because I think in quilters collection 2 okay here actually just so you can see remember I said that the print the PDF file font was there within the quilters collection 2 it says print PDF file font we haven't gotten three up yet but you can actually see the keystrokes and that might not show up on your screen so I'll go back but you can actually see the uh, the keystrokes assigned to all of those different objects now the way you install these fonts is you install them into one of the folders within the program file folders of the software and uh, when you do do that and let's go back to here and close this and hopefully I'm back when you do install that ESA file into the Wilcom platform you actually can then control pretty much anything you want now here I will let you know that there is different modules of hatch within the personalizer module which does lettering and layout you can bring in the letters you can actually bring in those ESA files as a uh, uh, you know piece of uh, you know quilted red work but you can't then go in and change the stitch types that's the the limit if you have the modules up which go to the which are the modules up digitizer and the what's the, the one? Uh, composer those ones because editing is then included you can choose the objects break them apart and you can actually play with them now I'm getting this cut thing here going on in the corner so here's the thing I need somebody who actually said the word free I am going to give away the ESA uh, quilters collection 3 FF font and that's the flexi fill font 
Uh, it has not been released yet. It won't be released for a couple of months, but you will get it before everybody else does. If you don't have the Hatch software, then uh, let us know when you message us and I'll replace it with some cool designs or something like that instead. So uh, give me a name, Jennifer Deer. I am scrolling and I'm going to say Val Ellis. Val Ellis, you got the uh, Quilters uh, Collection 3 Flexi Fill font before anybody else. And uh, send us a what's that? Send us a message, please, and we'll get that off to you. Uh, I think we are pretty much done. Does anybody have anything else? Hopefully you guys had a, a great time. I was kind of worried without having a, a set topic to go on that I wouldn't be able to talk for an hour, but apparently huh. that's not a problem for me. Jennifer's going, ha. Huh. <laughs> so anyways, uh, thanks for joining us guys. And, uh, by all means, you know, catch us on YouTube. Uh, we have the Hatch software to download. You can download our uh, PDF, our, you know, actually I think I have a button here that James put up. Our cheat sheet, you can download our Digitizing 101 cheat sheet and video webinar off of our Digitizing Made Easy site. We have designs, we have all kinds of stuff. And just so you know, next year is going to be a really big year for us. We have tons of things planned that are absolutely new. So we are excited and we're all working really hard. Okay, maybe a quick question. Quick Bruce question. Saying, would it work in Janine program? Maybe Janome Janome program? program. Uh, the ESA files, if I'm understanding correctly, the ESA files will work only in Janome version 5. So the, the newest version of Janome, the ESA files will work. Other than that, they will not. If you own the commercial software, E4, E2, E3 software, our ESA files will work there, and they do work within Hatch version 1 and 2. So it was, thank you guys for uh, joining us, and we appreciate your support. We appreciate you helping us hit 10,000 people on YouTube. Uh, blessings to everybody and thank you also for all your wonderful comments with our, our daughter getting married. It was an awesome, awesome time. So And the grandbabies. And the grandbabies. The grandbabies are, are just incredible. But man, I'll tell you, I was tired after. <laughs> okay, thanks. Blessings.